disempowerment is a very big issue for many people. I would say for many of the nicest people, which is in very unfortunate because it's the nicest people that I really would love to live in a world with where they feel empowered. I notice that disempowerment often also happens with people who are capable of uncertainty, which is a close relative of nuance and subtlety. And I really would love to live in a world where the people who are especially perceptive of nuance and sudden subtlety and who have a lot of room for uncertainty feel empowered, even if they don't have the answer. In part, so that people who feel very clear that they have the answer and do not have much uncertainty and are feeling very empowered, have someone to talk to <laughs> who says, wait, I don't think this is clear yet. I would love to be in a world where the people who are most loving and caring feel most empowered. And what I notice is many people, often very early in life, saw power abused by people who were not loving and caring, at least not in that moment. And so they got frightened because they're loving and caring and they never ever want to hurt anybody and they don't want to abuse power or dominate because they know what it's like to be on the receiving end of that. Those are the people I most long to see empowered. And so I'm going to be teaching a class on it, on power authority, domination, the whole conversation of healthy empowerment. That's going to be the focus. This has a lot to do with the relationship between our upper body and lower body and the relationship between our front body and our back body. In many different traditions, there are what the Chinese call three Dan Tian or cinnabar centers and other cultures call different things, but basically there's a place, uh, if you go through the crown and the third eye into the center of your head, there's a place of light. That's the upper cinnabar field. And its pathway to union with the divine is wisdom. There's another one, the middle cinnabar field in the heart chakra area, the center of the chest. There's a light in there also. And this is a pathway to divinity called compassion. And then down in the lower burner, down in the low belly, like low, few inches below the navel and above the pubic, few inches above the pubic bone, below the navel, see if you can put your hands there and find it. There's another light, a deep pilot light in the dark down in there. And that is the seat of power. Many martial arts work from here as as makes a great deal of sense. The triad of three levels is very common in Chinese medicine, heaven, human, and earth. This is the heavenly wisdom center. Oh, we commune with the universe. And if we, if we, if we go this way, we, we have a communion with the universe it's not necessarily that shareable unless we're quite articulate. 
and it makes it down into the throat chakra. The lower body, the, the place of power, the earthly, um, we don't usually share that part of us with a lot of people. And it's really about my earthly existence, my potency. And compassion is the middle, the human, and that is the place of exchange. Whole heart connection is a pathway that's focused on the up, you know, the, the middle here and opening the middle until it engulfs all the way up and all the way down. So when we're speaking about power and authority, we are speaking about starting at the heart and opening the heart fully downward to encompass the lower body and the seat of power. That may be uncomfortable at first because there may be all kinds of squelched stuff down there. Rawr! You know, all that stuff may be down there. All the stuff that we are afraid that if we had no heart and just a power drive center, you know, I would agree that this is not what I am looking, this is not the kind of empowerment I'm talking about. I am absolutely speaking about starting with anchoring in the heart and we will do those heart anchoring exercises and opening downward to include what's in the pelvis that may in fact have so much to say it's unbelievable and bringing it all the way down to the ground. Because especially at first, there's so much voltage and power, voltage that is not grounded. Yeah, that's kind of wild. So we'll, we'll be working with really opening the bottom of the feet, really opening the butt, the legs to be able to power, bring it down because the earth is an incredible, incredible storage tank for all that power. This is very related to a feeling that many people have that they're too much and that they need to tone it down. That is a sign of ungroundedness. If you are not grounded, your voltage will make other people very nervous. Nobody wants to be around ungrounded, high voltage. Freaks them out, freaks me out. High voltage that is grounded feels very different. This is my power and I'm bringing it down to common ground. That's somebody you want on the march with you. It's very different than this is my power and I'm throwing it in your face, deal with me. This is still right here in front of you, but it's loving, it's heart-centered and it's going down. When it comes back up again, through the back body, through the spine, that's authority. Most of it's in reserve down below, but as it comes up the spine, there's a feeling of authority and healthy authority, the spine is straight. Uh, let me just, like unhealthy authority, it's looming forward a little bit to down press you. Like the will, sometimes it comes out through the eyes. I will, you know, a person can lock into another person's eyes, bladder one. Yeah. So 
what we will be working with is gently, so tenderly, because there's often been a lot of abuse of power and people really need the holding and the tenderness, helping people find their power and bring it down first. And that itself is a journey. That is a journey. And there's a lot of healing that happens along the way. When that feels solid and secure, with love and solidarity, we will be helping each other find our back body, find our spine, and start feeling for the nature of our authority, which is very, very specific and is based on the nature of our essence. An eagle has eagle authority and can speak on the matter of eagles. And a zebra has zebra authority and can speak on what a zebra inherently knows. And you have an authority that may not have been adequately conveyed to you in kindergarten, which is a shame. And then through the rest of school, what is that line from Cat Stevens? From the moment I could talk, I was ordered to listen. I think many of us have had that experience. And so the idea that we might have some authority, which often came erupting up in our teens, because damn it, we knew that the bogus crap that was going on around us, that we knew something, we knew something. And we knew that maybe if our parents knew it once, they don't know it now. And even if we loved them, we had a message. And many of us were not adequately initiated into how to hold our authority with politeness and simple confidence to speak our message, or even without speaking, just to be our message, just to walk around and ask for change of a 20 as our message. I think this is what the world needs. I think we can do it with tremendous humility. I think there's no contradiction between power and love and between authority and humility in the heart space. So that's what we're gonna be practicing and healing together. And I hope you'll come join us. <laughs>